Good morning, thanks for joining. It's day 13 of Advent of Cold. I would say let's jump right into the puzzle. Minecart Madness. A crop of this size requires significant logistics to transport the juice. So to transport produce, soil, fertilizer and so on. Oh yeah, because we had this huge number of plants in our tunnel for 50 billion years. The elves are very busy pushing things around in carts on some kind of rudimentary system of tracks they've come up with. Seeing as how cart and track systems don't appear in recorded history. Good morning, what time zone are you in? Uh, is it daylight for you yet? It's just starting to get light outside in New York. The elves seem to be making this up as they go along. They haven't even figured out how to avoid collisions yet. You map out the tracks, your puzzle, input, and see. Good morning. And see where you can help. Tracks consist of straight paths, dash and pipe, curves, slash and backslash, and intersections, pluses. Curves connect exactly two perpendicular pieces perpendicular pieces of track. For example, this is a closed loop. Okay, so these two straight paths are perpendicular and then there's a curve here. Intersections occur when two perpendicular paths cross. At an intersection, a card is capable of turning left, turning right, or continuing straight. Oh, left, right. Wait, so it cannot go up and down? Oh, yeah, because from where it's coming, it's up and down. Okay, left, right. Here are two loops connected by two intersections. Okay. So, did you already solve this, or are you looking at this for the first time like I am? Several cards are also on the tracks. Cards always face either up, down, left, or right. Um, on your initial map, the track under each card is a straight path matching the direction the card is facing. Okay. Each time a card has the option to turn by arriving at any intersection, it turns left the first time goes straight the second time so l s and then it turns right the third time and then it repeats those directions starting again oh. okay so you already looked at this You have a plan for part one. Oh, and then you don't know what part two is because you haven't solved it. Well, I might be, I might be spoiling it for you then. <laughs> um, okay, so it's going left, straight, right, left, straight, and so on. Okay, and this is independent of the intersection, so this is the card's memory, basically. <laughs> All right, makes sense. See you tomorrow, maybe. Have fun at work. Cards all move at the same speed. They all move a single step at a time. They do this based on their current locations. Cards on the top row move first, then cards... Wait, I thought they all move at the same... Oh, same speed, not the same time. The top row, left to right, and then on the second row from left to right, and so on. Okay. For example, suppose there are two cards on a straight track, top, bottom, top, bottom, and then... So the top moves, and the bottom moves, and the top moves, and then we get an X, I guess. First, the top card moves. It is facing down, so it moves one square. The first tick ends, and the process repeats. Uh, the second card moves up right into the first card, colliding with it. Uh, the location of the crash is marked with an X. This ends the second and the last tick. Okay, so are they broken now? Hi, Robin. Good to see you. How are you doing? Have you solved this yet? Here's another example. 
They look so pretty. Okay. After following their perspective paths for a while, the cards eventually crash. To help prevent crashes, you'd like to know the location of the first crash. Locations are given in x, y coordinates, where the furthest left column is x and the furthest top column is y. Oh, no. We still are doing y from top to bottom. So if this is our coordinate thing, then we have x's going from left to right and we have y's going from top to bottom. Yes. Uh, in this example, the location of the first crash is 7, 3. All right, let's think this over. So the tracks always stay the same. We do get the tracks. What was the sample input here? So we do get these tracks with the intersections and we're supposed to move them. Do we always have to finish a tick? I guess it doesn't matter because as soon as one crashes, we have our answer. I'm good. I'm just drinking my morning tea and the sun is coming up outside. And this puzzle doesn't look terribly hot, so I'm excited. <laughs> and I'm excited for the upcoming holidays. Cool. Well, thanks for looking at those. Uh, please help me out if I get stuck. Okay, so we get this puzzle input. And then this one moves. Uh, when it puts them on the intersection, it's already pointing where it's going. So if this one is pointing down, and then I thought it's pointing left. Why is it going this way? Oh, because left when you're upside down is right. Never mind. Don't ever let me drive or we'll, we'll not get where we need to go. <laughs> and it's doing those until it has. Okay, let's get started. Okay, let's copy those. Input day 13, 150 rows, that's not too bad. And let's also copy over the test input. Where was this test input? Did I get everything? Okay, yeah, that looks all right. Okay, and at first they are all on the straight one, so I can easily replace those. Okay. Yeah, and then they have empty spaces here. Good to know. All right, that's going to be fun pausing this. Okay, let's see, how do I want to do this? So I want to pass the inputs. And I cannot just deal with strings. Mm. Okay, I think I want to pass the input and sort of remove the cards from it, or replacing it with, with the underlying um, pipe or dash. And then I'm parsing out the cards and I put them in a list of cards with their position and the history of their last turn. And then I will just move them around but I need to have the position sorted and we said we want to do the rows first. Okay. All right, let's do this. So I have the inputs. Oh, 
Um, I guess we don't even know the dimension of the input yet. Oh, Robin, I hope you find more time to do the puzzles because I'm completely addicted to them. They're so much fun, so I hope you get to do them too. I don't remember, did you say you do them in JavaScript or what language are you solving them in? Yeah, JavaScript as well. Okay. Um, do I know that this is a square? I guess I don't. Okay. So let height is inputs that length, and the uh, width from left to right is inputs of zero that length so we're working on a um, with with times height grid yeah, I just checked that the lines are not trimmed, um, and they are not trimmed. Um, note day 13. We are on a 13 by 6 grid. Does that look somewhat right? So we are on a 13, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13 by 6, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Okay. Um, hey, Model Dreamer. I think I know some Node. Um, I'm one of the members of the Technical Steering Committee for Node.js, so we're the up to 20 people who get to decide what code lands in Node ultimately and what the roadmap is. I'm doing Advent of Code. That's a puzzle with 25 puzzles every day in December. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm still learning the new syntaxes that come into JavaScript every year. And I'm making lots of mistakes, so it's not that I'm just running through this, but mostly I know Node. Do you do any Node or JavaScript? Okay, that might have been. Where was that? Do you remember? <laughs> In the right place. Okay, good thinking. Okay, so I want to go through this. Cool, thank you. So I'm going through the grid, and now I'm going through a row. Um, so let, I'm just gonna work on a 2D array and then so grid is a array of size height of arrays and then for let row of grid no i don't think this works if i want to set it Okay, 
4, let i equal 0, i is less than h, i plus plus, grid of i is an array of with fill, do I need to fill this? Um, yeah, I did go to a few TC39 meetings. So TC39 is the committee that writes the ECMAScript specification. So the changes that go in every year, those are proposed and discussed and accepted by TC39. So we come together every two months for three days and propose things, look at the proposals that made it to stage one and then move them on to stage two and so on. And then ultimately once a year, the final new version is written up. Okay. So I have this grid and I almost think I don't need to fill the grid. So we have a grid of empty arrays and now I'm going through the input and if inputs of i j is equal to n left or if inputs of i j is equal to a card that is moving right then i want to say grid of ij is equal to a vertical track if we have a card that is moving up or Moving down. Is that right that the down card is just the letter V? I guess it is, right? Oh, what are you working on uh, that looks like a puzzle? It is totally a puzzle. So it is Advent of Code, which is a super neat uh, collection of 25 puzzles for the holidays by Eric Wastel. And we're helping the elves to, I don't even know what the elves are doing, but we're helping the Christmas elves to get some stuff done. And this one, so you can find it on adventofcode.com, we're on day 13. Today we're looking at a set of tracks. Uh, so they could look something like this. The actual input is much bigger, it is uh, size 150 lines. So these are these tracks. And then the elves have cards on them. It's super awesome and there's so much fun. So there are these cards on them like these here and the cards are moving um, in the direction that they're pointing to. But at the intersections, so pluses are intersections, at intersection cards can turn around and then since there's more than one card on it, if you wait long enough, doo -doo 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 -doo, then these two cards here boom, crash, they're colliding. And so our first job is to figure out where on this grid is the first car crash happening. Yes, ultimately we want to help the elf, so we need to know this, obviously. <laughs> so that's what we are solving. Um, and I've been doing those for the last 13 days. Usually these puzzles involve quite a lot of regexing. And then they involve some algorithm thinking, but they're not quite like the um, like the coding problems that you do at a Google interview where there is really heavy focus on finding optimal complexity. Like here you're usually fine just doing it sort of brute force, like quadratic runtime complexity. Um, the other day it didn't work because we had to the fifth power, we had five loops in each other, that was too much for it, so it had to be a little smarter than brute force there. And yesterday again you could not brute force this because it was 50 billion iterations, but it was a different kind, I don't want to spoil it, but it was a different kind of solution than what you would expect from a coding interview. Like, thinking outside of the box a lot, but lots of fun. 
So if you're not a fully trained computer scientist, but you like these coding, if you like to write code and you like a little bit of a challenge, those are great because you can usually find a solution without having that academic background. And oftentimes the academic background doesn't help because it's more outside of the box. Okay, so what I'm trying to get now is I just want to extract the grid without the vehicles from it. Um, so else grid of i, j is equal to input of i, j. And I guess I shouldn't talk so much because at some point I want to go into work today. <laughs> okay. So we're setting up the grid. Yeah, so if you have any time, you should totally check it out. Day one, the first part, is super easy. Um, they're fun, they're addictive, and you don't have to get them on the first try. Like, that's the fun part that you're like trying to get it. Did I switch back to coding? I should switch back to coding, otherwise this is a bit boring. Yeah, exactly. If they were too easy, then it wouldn't be that much fun. And this one, like especially if you have an off by one bug or if you like miss one of the IJs here, then that's really hard to find later on. So, uh, where was I? Was I printing my grid? No. So print takes a grid for let i equals zero i less than grid that length i plus plus console that log grid that join. Input is not defined in line 35 because it's inputs. Okay. Why is this all in one row? That's not what I wanted. Shoot, shoot, shoot. Okay, this is starting off really well. I'm going through the height and the width and so grid is an array of height six and then I'm going through the six rows and for every width I'm putting oh uh, yeah, see, that's what I'm talking about. So i is really the y value and j is the x value. So let's try this again. And of course, if you're copying and pasting like this, you never make any mistakes. Ho, ho, ho. Okay, that didn't work either. Can I read property zero of undefined? And that's on line 30. Okay, so the height is the y value. No, that was just silly. My grid is the wrong way around. Okay, and why does it not print nicely? Why is it always the same thing? So we're taking these inputs. Mm. 
Okay, inputs is a set of rows. Oh, because inputs... Let's do this. When does one... Oh, grid that join. Duh, I'm taking the whole grid. Why did nobody say anything? Because it was off screen, okay. Uh, grid of I. Okay. Except I'm always using. Where's my grid? Um, every single line is the same here, so that is bad. Why is every line the same? What's the test input like? Are they always the last one? Yeah, they seem to be all the last one. Okay, somehow I'm only printing i, i less than this, script at join. I seem to be printing only the last row. No, I seem to be only setting the last row. So I have these inputs. What is wrong here? This should be the easy part. That does not take half an hour to do usually. Yeah, so fill, what do you mean each area will be the same? I'm filling them, isn't that always a new array when I do that? Okay, sorry about, I need to tell my bot that like writing JavaScript code is not spamming. They might not understand that, but it's definitely not spamming. Okay. Is it really? I thought that's a new one every time because this one doesn't have a reference, but I can totally change that. So from I to H, I want to say grid of i is an array, right? That's a new one now? Oh my gosh, okay. Wait, why is that the case? I'm so confused. That is, okay. Yeah, I guess I'm always passing in this one argument. Yeah, now that you say it, it makes total sense. Okay, Whew, lesson learned. All right, so I did get my grid and I removed the vehicles, so that's good. And now we need let the cards again, that's an array. And I guess I just want to copy and paste this. <laughs> no, I can just do that. So I have a grid and I have cards and I want cards also be a 2D thing? No. Yeah, reference and mutation. All right, but we had good debug control output unit tests. So we found that before we ran into other problems. Okay, do I want the cards to be a 2D thing? Do I want them to be a map? But later I need to sort them. What do I want to do with the cards? So the cards have an X and a Y grid. 
and then they have a direction where they're turning. And once I have the cards, I think I want cards to be a map. And I want the map to be an X coordinate that goes to um, Y and direction. And maybe I don't want the Y's like this. Maybe I want the Y's to be another map or something so I can sort over it. But it's only 150 in them, so let's do it like this for now. Okay, and the directions are L, straight, right, in that order. I would go for an array of objects, you have like 20 trains. Yeah, okay. Yeah, 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 this, this map is ugly so let's just do an array but i like maps okay and then we have these directions and we have a card is an object that has an x a y and a direction okay so here we found a card so if Oh, what did I press? If it is going left, um, let card equal an object where x is j, y is i, and d is um, 0, 1, 2. Mm, let's work with letters, otherwise it's hard to read. So is this right? This is going left, right? And then I want to do cards that push that card. Else... It's going right. Um, okay, there are two things. There's the direction that the card is going, and then there is where it will turn the next time. So the direction is left, right, up, or down. And then the next turn is always initialized with L. So direction is left, right, up or down. And direction of next turn is in the order left, straight, right. Yeah, I can... Now I wouldn't have a map with the coordinates of the whole board. I just have the, um, so I mean a map collection, not a map of how the tracks and the cards are laid out. I mean a map collection, so it would have 20 entries in it and I could just search for the key. Oh, but you're right, I'd have to go down through all 150. Yeah, I was thinking get the keys and then sort those by... Okay, never mind. I'll just work on an array. That'll be fine. Array of objects. Yeah, but when I sort those, I have to always specify that I'm sorting by X or by Y. But anyways, so my card needs these four things. They're always initialized with L. And... Okay, more chances for copy and paste to fail. So if we're moving up, otherwise we're moving down, so the direction is up, else the direction is down. So, and now if you're moving down and you're turning left, 
then you are turning it looks like the car is turning right for somebody who's looking at this map so i have to figure out what those are yeah okay but we're not even there yet so now we have a list of those and console that log the cards clockwise and counterclockwise then there is no left right confusion but wouldn't it change so if the next turn is counterclockwise and now the thing is facing the other way okay no you're right that is good so direction of next turn um so would left be would left be counterclockwise then or would it be clockwise because a car that is moving up then a left is counterclockwise but the car that's moving down a left is clockwise or like from the point of view of a car yeah it's always relative to the train okay so i'm a train and i'm turning right so i'm turning clockwise okay so we're always starting with counterclockwise 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 yeah i hope i'm not streaming super long um i'm at most streaming for another hour because then i have to go so i hope that i get part one done um actually with all the turning this looks more complicated than i thought so i'll probably do the rest tonight so in like 12 hours yeah yeah i was just trying out this new time now and there's surprisingly many people online but let's see how this goes okay so i have the cards i have two cards here one is on um two zero and it's going right let's just okay thanks for the follow hope to see you soon and thanks for like helping with the coding here <laughs> all right let's just quickly double check if those are actually the right results so to do, do, do is the initial input one of the cards is in two zero so uh, two to the right one to the left and it is turning right um was the grid zero indexed or one indexed zero indexed okay perfect Initial, initialize grid and cards cool we got that so we got the cards and now we want to start ticking good warm-up for work okay yeah my work code is way cleaner than this it doesn't have a ton of i's and j's in it and double four loops with code copied all over the place just saying Okay, up and down. Awesome, we get that. We got the cards. Um, so, sep initialize the grid as a function, it takes inputs and it does all this it creates grid and card and initializes them and then it returns a grid and the cards i think i like that and then let grid and cards equal in 
initialize the grid of inputs so we can see in the main function what we're doing uh, h is not defined returns is not defined because awesome yep that still looks good okay so let me collapse this function so it's not in the way as much okay so now that we have the cards we want to tick the cards so now I need to get the order of my cards and then I want to move each single one of them. Okay, now I'm thinking, should I compare the card? So there's always one moving. Um, every card moves once but they move in a specific order so i think first of all i want to get the order of the cards um, and how do i do that i need a sort function um so i want to do cards start sort and I'm comparing card one with card two and I want to do um, the top ones move first so I need to have c1 dot y minus c1 C to that Y. And if those are equal, if C one that Y is not equal to C two that Y. Return this. And otherwise return c1 that x minus c2 that x. Okay, is that right? I want to go from left to right. So usually when I sort numbers, I always do for a, b, a minus b. So here I want the small, oh, I think that's okay. And is the sorting in place? How does sort work? Where's my lookup? Sort, sorts in place. Um, I'm pretty sure it sorts in place, right? So if I do What if I do cards of one comma cards of zero? It cannot operate on that. No, it can operate on that. Oh no, wait. Okay, order cards, cards that slice that sword. Uh, what's that slice doing here? I just want to make sure that it really sorts stuff. Okay, it's really sorting it. And if I'm printing the wrong cards, so they're wrong and then they're sorted. 
Oh yeah, Slice just gives me a copy so it won't mutate that. Okay, awesome. So I have the cards and now I have the ordered cards without messing up my original cards. Sounds good. And now that I have the ordered cards for that card of ordered cards, um, I guess I want to move the card now. So how do I move the card? Um, so now I need to figure out where on the grid is the card. Um, but I know right now that they're all on the flat ones, so I could just take that for granted. Um, and I'm putting them into a new array for one tick. So I need to take the card, so I have the x and y coordinates, those are card that x, card that y, and then I want the track is on the grid of yx. So I know the track. Now, if track is equal to straight line, Then if card dot direction is equal to up, then I want a new card. So we're moving up. I am on a straight line. I'm moving up. And so now moving up, I need to check if that one is an intersection. So what are the cases that could happen? I'm moving up and there could be another up one. I'm moving up and there could be a corner to the right or to the left or I'm moving up and there's an intersection. What happens if I'm coming, I need to read that up. What happens if I end up on a curve? Why are there even straight curves in this? Okay, so here's an example where it's coming to a curve. And that means it's already turning. And it doesn't have a chance of where it's turning. That's just where it goes. Because if it were to still point left, that would be wrong then anyways. Okay. Okay. So I have a straight line and I'm pointing up. So the next track is grid of y minus 1 because up the numbers get smaller and I'm keeping x. So if next track is a straight line, Then the new card is the same as the old card, except that it's now one higher. So that is card x is card dot x, y is card dot y, one up, direction is card that d and next turn is card dot next turn. Okay, how many of those will I be writing out? That seems like a lot of work. Mm. New 
record that those equals this. Dot M so I have a card and then at the end I want to do new cards that push that new card. But while I'm setting this, I need to already check if I have a collision, right? Or should I sort them? No, I can't do that in the sorting function, otherwise it's too early. Yeah, exactly. I have to check after everyone, but what do I compare it with? Because the old cards, some of them have already moved. Um, I think I don't want a new card here. I want to replace the old card, right? Oh yeah, because they might just move away from each other. Good call. So I definitely want to do this after every move. So I have these cards, X and Y, if it is a straight line and if it's moving up and if the track, does it matter what it's on? I think it doesn't really matter what it's on, right? So I have a card that is moving up and the next track, track is a straight line. So I'm just setting, I'm not doing any of that. I'm just setting card.y is the old card.y but one up. Okay. Otherwise, if next track is equal to a right corner, then I'm also moving it one up, but now the direction, so we're moving up, going one off to the right, so now the direction is it's going right. Now, if it's going left, then and the next time the direction is left, but it's always moving one up. So really, I don't want this here. So if it's moving up, then it's always moving up. Got that, okay. Um, if the next check is this, then nothing happens. So if the next track is a left curve or right curve, then I have to move the direction, but I'm just going one up and I'm not doing the turn one. And also if next track, so now I have to think is an intersection. Yeah, it doesn't matter what I'm moving from because I always have them pointing in the right way. It moves what I'm moving into. So if I have a right, if I have an intersection, I'm also moving one up. And now I'm moving up. So if card next turn is equal to counterclockwise, then cart.n 
is set to straight. Is that the order? No, if it's clockwise, um, the order was left straight right. Uh, where's the input? Okay, left, straight, right, L, S, right. And I could do this in much smarter ways by like having them in an array and adding them up or something. Actually, let me do that. Um, let next turns equal left, straight, Right, so if the car is clock, the I didn't call them left, I was calling them counterclockwise, straight, and clockwise. So if the card is we're going up and we're turning clockwise, so we're basically turning, doing a right turn. So now the direction is right. Else if card dot n equals if it's straight we don't need to change the direction but if it is counterclockwise now the direction is equal to L and I want to say card dot next is equal to Okay, I need to turn off this mod. It's not working for programming, so it's it's thinking that these capital letters here are very offensive and then it blocked everything else. <laughs> Don't you say capital letters. Okay, so we want... Yeah, I need to turn off the bot. Sorry about that. Didn't mean to mod you like this. No, and also it broke my train of thought. So the next direction is next turns that find index of the old direction. So this is the index. I want to add one and I don't want to fall over. So modulo three. So I'm always increasing the next turns by one to the right. Okay, so what did you write here? Uh, clockwise, upper right, DL counterclockwise DLDR. Shouldn't there be a U in here? And also, isn't clockwise and counterclockwise different depending on where the card is turning in the first point? Okay, it starts with a U. Up, left. Yeah, that's counterclockwise. Yeah, I know how to read a clock this way. <laughs> Oh, I guess with the camera you get it the other way round. Okay, and you're saying just make the two cycles? Are you saying if I just have three directions in my next term that then I'm wrong? I think that's okay though. I think that's okay. So I'm at an intersection. I was going up, so I could go right, or I could go left, or I could go straight, in which case I'm not changing the direction, I'm only changing the next. 
Oh, you're saying it gets easier if you know how to turn. Yeah, let me just see how far I get with copy and paste. Okay, so I don't need the current track. I have the next track. I'm moving right, left, or plus. Um, otherwise, if it's a straight line, it's this. Um, else if next track is equal to this one um throw new error wrong direction card card that x card that y going card that this direction okay what was our test input we were starting with one going to the right and one going down okay great that i implemented the uh, one that's going up okay so we move this card so if we're going up then this is going one up. I'm taking the next grid, which is also the one one up, and then I'm checking the next grid for everything. And if it's an intersection, I'm changing the turns and I'm changing directions unless the turn was straight. And I have a little bit of grade error handling in here. And I can't even run that. Oh, shouldn't have to go soon. Unexpected identifier. Okay, that's not too bad. New cards is not defined in 101. New cards that push because I don't want that. Okay, so I did this one tick. Yeah, let me just write this out for the other direction. If I'm going down, then now I'm going down one here. And if the next track is this, I'm going left. If the next track is this, I'm going right. If I'm turning counterclockwise, it is now left. And if I'm turning clockwise, it is now right. Okay, that wasn't too bad. Copy and paste errors, I hear you. So now my card is going left. So the X direction is getting smaller. The X direction is getting smaller. Um, I am going left, so now I'm going down I'm going up if I'm at an intersection and I'm turning counterclockwise then I'm going up if I'm turning counterclockwise I'm turning down and if it is a straight one now I have a problem good thing there's only four directions so now I'm going right which means I am um, increasing my x value if i'm going right and i see this then i'm going up i'm going down i'm going right and i'm turning clockwise so i'm ending up down i'm ending up up beautiful code not okay so i've moved one car Great job. And so I'm moving one car. So I want to say move cart. Let move 
is a function that takes a card and it returns the same one after doing all of this to it. So it takes x and y. Oh, and it does need to know about the grid. Gee, this is a long function. So it does need to know about the grid. So I want to move this card on the grid. Next trash is not defined in line 88. <laughs> Sorry about that. Okay, how is this not a problem when I ran this before? Oh, next trash. Sounds like trash almost. <laughs> next track. Oh my gosh, okay, card.n is not defined in line 54. Find index of why do I have quotes around that? Do I want quotes here? Card n is not a function in 54. I'm not trying to use it as a function. So I want to find the index of that leather and I don't need quotes around it. Oh, hey, um, oh, is find index not a function? Wait a second. So I'm working on advent of code, an advanced calendar with a bunch of programming puzzles. Oh, find index expects a predicate. So I want index off here, right? Is index off going to work? I think so. Index off. You see my command D trick? Oh my gosh, it compiles. Okay. So, um, Smoothie, it's an advent calendar, and we are helping the elves to save Christmas, I guess. I'm not really sure what the overall goal is, but it's on adventofcode.com. It's one puzzle a day. We're on day 13, so we're halfway through. And today we're dealing with cards on a track. So we have a track like this and we have two cards on it moving uh, right and down along the track and we need to figure out after how many ticks they're crashing into each other. So here they're facing each other and then they're crashing and that's what we're trying to do um, except that our input is a bit bigger than this one. Yeah. These puzzles are really fun. If you haven't tried them, you should totally try it out because it's super addictive. Okay, so <laughs> we've moved the card successfully, I hope. And after every card move, I want to say, um, did anything crash? So now I want to check so I'm doing this for every card. So while true, 
So you were asking what I'm working on. It's not really working. It's more fun than work. And in fact, I have to run to work pretty soon. Um, okay, so I'm doing this while true. I'm changing every card. And I want to figure out if any of the cards collided. Oh, so I have the card of the ordered cards. And I need to check if has collision on ordered cards. So if we have a collision on ordered cards, then we want to do console log crash and oh okay so let x y equal collision of ordered cards If and it'll return minus ones if nothing collided, so we have a crash on X, Y, and then we can return. And this is not how you spell true. Okay. Just brute force the submit button, the submit form. <laughs> well, I'm kind of brute forcing the solution. Look at this code here. It's just copy and pasted over and over again. <laughs> like, let me hide this so that I feel better about myself. Okay, so let's write this. No, it doesn't tell you that. It doesn't tell you that. Um, <laughs> and there's a timer. Um, if you submit the wrong answer, you have to wait. and. I never submitted it more than once, but somebody else said you have to wait longer if you submit wrongly. So I think um, I think it like grows exponentially or something. So you're not getting very far by brute forcing the submit button. And it wouldn't be fun. It's like more fun to solve this cute puzzle and be like, why does it not work? Off by one, but where? Okay. But Collision takes a list of cards and let x equal minus 1, let y equal minus 1, and it returns these coordinates. Um, how do I find if two of them are the same? So cards that map for every card, I want a, um, am I mapping or am I filtering? For every card I want to see if cards that index of C, uh, I'm from Germany, I'm from Germany, southwest, close to the French border. So very sorry about my accent. I'm trying hard, but I know it like straight out sounds like a German speaking English. Uh, cards of C. Yes, Karlsruhe. How do you know? Have you, who are you? Karlsruhe is where I grew up. Karlsruhe. They used to be really good in soccer, like when I was a little kid, they were playing in the Bundesliga. Uh, yes, I'm, I'm very, very German, but I've lived in the States for five months now. No, I've lived there before for a bit longer, but I moved back to New York. I moved back to the States. I'm in New York now in April. Okay. Oh, like right now or in the past? That's cool. 
Uh, I graduated right before they renamed it to KIT. So it used to be Technical University and now it's Karlsruhe Institute of Technology, KIT. And I, I uh, left right before they renamed it and got my master's and PhD in Virginia. Okay, so I want to look at the cards. How do I find the duplicates of something? If index of C... Uh, brain dead. So if I want the unique ones, I filter like that, right? If index of C... So I'm going through CI. And if last, can I not do last index of? Index last of, last index of, uh, oh. If last index of, Put them all into a set and compare the length. Oh, and just put into the set the X and Y. Actually, I kind of like that. Okay. Let C equal a new set for let card of cards see that at the array that has entries card.x, card.y, because I don't care which direction they are facing. Um, but then how do I know which one crashed? Still would need to find the double one. If C that has If that's already in the set, collision, then we want to return x and y, and then we add it. Okay, I don't really need to check the length, right? Because I'm checking which one's double here. Thank you, Incipidon. That is so much easier than like mapping and reducing and filtering. Okay, for every card, if x, y is in the set, we have a collision and otherwise we add it. Okay, I like this. And then, am I done already? Oh, I need to reset my ordered cards. So for every card, um, I move the card. And is this a reference or is it a copy? Well, we'll see when we run it. We move the card, we get the collision coordinates. If we had a collision, then we crashed and we are done. Otherwise, once we've worked through the whole set, we want to say, uh, how did I get the ordered cards? Okay. Order, I'll just copy that again. I'm too lazy to make a function. So, um, now I'm just ordering them again. Why did I want the initial ones not to be changed? What was my thinking here? So I'm ordering the cards. And then I go through the ordered cards and update them all, check after everyone, and then I order again. I think I don't even need to keep the cards around. Just saying. 
This is gonna fail really badly. Can I read property four of undefined? Oh no, off by one error in line 22. Ah, who would have thought the print function is broken? Um, okay. I need some debug output. So I'm moving the card. Okay, I'm looking at this auto mod and it's put is not a permitted term. How is put? Okay, I don't know slang, I guess. Mm. Okay, cool. What, what's your major, Smoothie? Is it computer science? Informatic? Well, I guess Germans don't hear that I have a German accent, but it's very obvious to everybody else. Okay, so I have my ordered cards. And how do I print them in a good way? Okay, I'm moving the card. Um, console that block tick. Okay. So this is the initial grid, and then we're doing two ticks, and then we are in trouble. How do I print these objects? We're moving card dot x card dot y. All right. Let's see. So we started out with a card in two zero facing to the right. We're moving it to three zero. And we started out with a card on 9, 3, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 3. I want to say, no, go away. Terminal. Terminal 1. Okay. I want to say this one here is 9, 3, 0, 1, 2, 3. Oh, so close. This one here. And it is moving down. So we're moving that to. Oh, why am I moving it to 10, 4? How is it doing two jumps? Who would have thought my move function is wrong? And then I'm moving this another one to the right. And I'm moving this another one down and strangely it's not increasing this time all right let's see what's wrong in the move function when we move down so where is if we're moving down we're increasing y but why is x changing at all hmm So we're moving it down and then the direction if this is moving down and it is first moving left so now the direction should be right oh now we're getting to card d equals right and we're increasing this Whew. Nope, same problem. 
Oh, Wirtschaftsinformatik. I was doing Informationswirtschaft for a while. Okay. Do you like it? All right, so we're starting at 2-0, we're moving to the right, so we go to 3-0, we're starting at 9-3, we're moving down, so we're getting 9-4, that looks good. Um, this one still moves to the right, so we get 4-0, and now this one should be turning left, so it shouldn't go down. So it is at this intersection now, I thought, and it should turn left, so it should be at ten four. Is this only four? One, two, three, zero, one, two, three, four. Yeah, this is four, ten, four. Okay. That looks good. So it's at 10, 4. Cannot read property 4 of undefined and line 22. So next track is grid of y minus 1. Why is my grid undefined here? So if grid of y minus 1 is undefined. Oh, somehow it's moving up. Oh, yeah, it's a very different field. Um, the, the business people in general, like having stereotypes, <laughs> it's different thinking, problem solving than computer science, different goals, what they're getting out. Okay, somehow I'm moving up when I really think I don't want to be moving up. So console log up for cart x card.y. And are you from Karlsruhe or did you move there for school? Okay. Oh, four zero is trying to go up. You shouldn't be going up. You should be going down. So if I'm moving right with a curve down, Okay, I'm moving right, right with a curve down. Yep, this looks like a copy and paste error. It should be UD because if I'm moving left, it's DU. Who would have thought I have typos in this kind of code? Okay, and this doesn't look like it's ever finishing. Good job. Uh, because it should collide after like seven ticks or so, right? Okay. So let's go here and instead of this, let's do let i equal 10 while 10 is bigger than zero. Um, let's make this i. So let's run this only 10 times. Okay, 3094, 4010, um, Should I look at the initial input and copy that over? Oh my gosh, from Bursa. Of course I know Bursa. <laughs> All right, so funny to like be connected home over 5,000 miles away. 
All right. Um, so we are starting with zero three, and then this one here was like nine four, I think. And then we're moving to zero four. And this should be nine, oh, nine three, nine four. And then this one should be zero five, while this one, the nine is moving, so it's ten four. And then this one is going down, so it should be one five. This one was going one to the right, so it should be eleven four. How many of those? <laughs> um, this one was going one down, so it should be two five. Or well, five two if I do x, y. And this one was going one to the right, so it should be uh, 12, 4. Yeah, I'm having my x and y's right. I want 12, 4, so these here should be 3, 0, 4, 0, 5, 0, 5, 1, 5, 2. And then this one went 1 to the right, so it should be 6, 2, whereas this one went 1 up, so it should be 12, 3. Can you please collide, buddies? Uh, okay, that is quite a few loops, so let's change that a little bit. Hi, Chandu, how's it going? Oh, you're not in Karlsruhe. Okay, you're in Taiwan. Whoa, that's somewhere else. How do you like it there? What brought you over there? Uh, three, four, nine, four, four, zero, ten, four, four, two. Oh, why is this going to four, one? Oh, because we're going down. Four, one, four, two. Five two six two twelve two seven two. I mean, that looks kind of right. Let's do this a few more times. And where should they be colliding? They should be colliding in seven three. I feel like I was really close to seven three. Okay, they should be collating in 7, 3, which means we are 7 over 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and 3 down. So this is where I want them to collide, or this is where I want them to collide. And so they're colliding at 7, 3, and they were coming from... 7.3 was coming from 7.2 and 7.4. So here's almost collision and before that they were at 7.1 and 8.4. Oh, seven one eight four seven. Okay, they did move. I'm just not. Oh, uh, this is silly. No, if x is bigger than minus one, that means we had them crash. Okay, let's look at the crash function. X and y sees a new set for every card. If this is in there, we have them. We get this, and then how many? One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay. Oh, that sounds great. 
I want to move to Asia at some point for a little while. Get all the good food. Okay, so they are moving the right way. It's just a collision function. And I might even... Oh yeah, of course, flights are really cheap to like everything that seems super far away from the US or from Europe. <laughs> okay, so the only problem is that this collision function doesn't quite work. We make a set. Um, C that has... Console log C. And oh, these sets are not very great. <laughs> Shouldn't these sets be bigger with two points? For these cards. We have an empty set, then we're adding all right, we have an empty set, so it's not in there, so we're adding it. But then we're trying to add exactly the same one. So after we add this. Oh, these are not considered identical because they're not exactly the same array. They just have the same values in there. All right. Well, thanks for joining from so far away. What time is it there? And more importantly, what's your favorite programming language? Sorry, got the wrong window. Okay, so we're looking at these sets and this has never works. Um, okay, yeah, I'll try to visit. Maybe I can find a conference and speak at that conference to visit. That's. That's always a fun way because then you have something you do, you don't feel like you're just doing vacation and you get to connect with the local community. I love doing that. All right, so Taiwan, next destination. Okay, oh, I'm running out of time. So I have this list of cards and for every card so I want to go through this and for every card and index, I want to see um, cards that find, I know this takes a value, um, value returns the value of the first element in the array where predicate is true. Um, Oh God, it's really not that hard to see if they're the same array in there twice. 
So that's how you use find. You want to find uh, find last. I want to find one. Now I want to find index of. I want the index of Isn't there a find index of? Oh, JavaScript, don't let me down this early in the morning. Okay, I want to find JavaScript array find last index. Last index of returns to position and then Oh, wrong link, last index off only takes these values. Um, where's the function where you can give it a function? Okay, I'm searching for find prototype, find index. Thank you that satisfies the providing test function. That's what I want. So find largest number takes one element and returns it if it's true. So we want find index. Is there a find last index maybe? And it only returns returns the index of the first element. Okay. Uh, find filter. Find index. Okay. So we want to find the index where I'm sure there's a last yeah I want the predicate but I don't want to find the element I want to find the index but I want the last index come on that has to be there no okay worst cases we go through the array in reverse order yes yes okay so we want to find the index So we want to find the index for everything in cart here. Let i equal cart.length minus one. I go smaller while i is greater or equal to zero. Messy code. Oh, that's what's missing. Okay. Now this is looking a bit, little bit better. So we want to Find the index where let current card equals cards of i. Okay, so I'm going through this from the right and I want to find the index where card.x equals to current card.x and card that y is equal to current card that y. So we find the index. Let 
index is equal to that. If the index is not equal to the one that we're looking at, then we have a collision. Oh, please work now. I have to go to work. That set idea was really neat though. It's just that stupid arrays are not equal when they look so equal. Okay, still no collision. Okay, collision for the length here, current card, console.log indices. We have i and we have index. None of these indexes should be. Oh, that worked great. Why the heck is car? Why is I zero? All right, well, have fun at work working with GCP. That's actually what I work on. So let me know if you have feedback <laughs> or questions, I guess. Okay, these indices are just completely wrong and useless. <laughs> zero indices. Okay, I have to stop opening terminals. Um, zero indices here. I hate coding under time pressure. Okay, cards that length. There's no typo in length, but then this let i equal cards that length. Oh my god, am I writing a for loop for the very first time here? While i greater zero, decrease i. Card is not defined. Well, what was I looking at? Uh, current card was this. How is card not defined? All right, thanks for watching. Bye bye. Yeah, yeah, for lots of uh, data types you can do that and obviously you could do that in JavaScript if you spend more time setting it up but if you're just using the out-of-the-box objects and arrays this doesn't work okay oh 164 we don't have a card because we want to return okay I'm getting stressed out oh my gosh we got a crash awesome well I mean sorry that something crashed but Mm. Do I need to print these ordered cards? Maybe once. I don't need to print moved. I do need to print crashed. How does this look? Indices. I don't need to print this either. Um, Works on test and pod. Okay, are you ready for the real deal? Let's run it. Okay, that didn't work. Shit, shit, shit. Did I delete the crash function? Am I an idiot? Oh, uh, I know what I did. Um, I have a loop at the bottom that stops after like 20 or so. Whew. Okay, I can fix that. Just a little things. Okay, we got the crash. We have the X and the Y coordinate. Okay, and I am... Um, Frazzle for time. All right, so input, let's make sure. Okay, one gold star closer. Awesome. 